Today this latest video update on this Saturday afternoon and we continue to watch two tropical systems in the western pacific one is severe tropical storm Tembin and the other one is typhoon Bolivan you can see both of them here in the infrared image the western pacific basin and of course you uh, can see here Bolivan first of all is massive cyclone with a uh, well-defined pinhole eye and, uh, about to plow into Okinawa perhaps making landfall in that island tomorrow. We also have here Tembin, uh, southwest of Taiwan, uh, meandering here in the South China Sea, the West Philippine Sea, and still expected to interact, uh, Fujiwara effect, basically, with um, the approaching Bolivan. First, we begin with a severe tropical storm Tembin, or Bagyong in Me, a last located approximately 470 kilometers southwest of Taipei, Taiwan. We're about 180 kilometers southeast of the city of um, Shantou here in uh, the uh, Guangdong province in southeastern China. Also about uh, located approximately 400 kilometers east southeast of Hong Kong. And of course you can see the system has weakened after making landfall in Taiwan from yesterday. Uh, you can see the uh, central dense overcast still remaining intact and actually we are starting to see some sort of an eye beginning to develop again it's still good outflow all across um, strong convective activity as well particularly on the southeastern periphery of the system uh, not longer uh, no longer suffering from the uh, interaction of the mountainous trains here in Taiwan but, um, still somewhat fragmented and uh, still uh, not that consolidated in terms of the structure you can see the uh, some uh, some disruption still doesn't have that uniform CDO look nevertheless again we are starting to see some strong convection uh, beginning to reappear right near the center and also the microwave image uh, from two hours ago showing you it seems to be an eye and eye wall very weak and elongated um, but just uh, gives you an idea on, on uh, the current status of the system. It certainly survived um, making landfall here in Taiwan. And uh, again, the system is still expected to re intensify into a typhoon. In fact, JTWC uh, upgraded this to a typhoon earlier this morning, um, citing the, uh, this microwave image as the reason for upgrading the system. Uh, JMA remains at a severe tropical storm uh, status. Now, due to the uh, system meandering here in the South China Sea, uh, we still have Central Weather Bureau giving extremely heavy rain advisories across southern Taiwan. No more typhoon warnings, uh, thankfully. Um, China Meteorological Administration, on the other hand, has issued blue warning for um, province here in Fujian, um, uh, Guangdong, for, for the um, effects from uh, Tembe, not expected to make landfall in blue warning is the lowest warnings uh, from say CMA but still urging residents to continue monitoring the system and also for uh, Hong Kong Observatory issuing standby signal number one as the system is within the 800 kilometer um, responsibility of the HKO uh, now again they are also not they are not expecting the system to make landfall in Hong Kong either but still urging residents to um, uh, to continue monitoring as the Fujiwara effect can sometimes be unpredictable uh, so there is still a very small chance of the system that could defy all forecasters right now and could eventually plow into China but again as of right now we still expect the system to eventually make a U-turn uh, back towards uh, Taiwan and as you've noticed Pegasus dropped all their signal warnings as the system is outside the Philippine air responsibility and not directly affecting the uh, islands north of Luzon. Now speaking of the uh, system, again this, the, we are seeing an eye signature on radar, very impressive signature actually, and you can see much of the rains remain offshore, although we are seeing some scattered uh, rains across uh, Guangdong and even into Fujian province. Much of the rains are now well away from Taiwan, so Taiwan right now is remaining dry. Uh, but again uh, if you consider the rains they received in the past two days and actually we are still seeing rains this uh, this morning earlier this morning some stations still reported well over 100 millimeters of rain and if you add that with the rains they received uh, two days ago some stations could certainly have collected more than 500 millimeters 
over especially along the mountainous area. Now again, the system is still forecast to strongly interact and strongly be, in, uh, be influenced by Bolivin. And again, still many agencies are forecasting a U-turn eventually, uh, staying in this area for probably another 24 to 36 hours, intensifying slowly uh, due to the warm waters here in South China and also weak wind shear in this region and possibly re-entering the Philippine air responsibility uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon and then could possibly brush the city of Hengchun in the southern tip of Taiwan um, by Monday afternoon and could also pass north of Basco Batanes so islands here in Batanes group of islands could still experience some tropical storm force winds and if it does intensify to typhoon status by Monday could see uh, strong winds also uh, being f uh, be felt across Batanes uh, group of islands and also have to watch for rains across uh, extreme northern Luzon especially across here in Ilocos Norte and also here in Cagayan province. More importantly the system is fortunately forecast to make another landfall here in southern Taiwan by Monday afternoon as perhaps a category 1 typhoon so uh, for now Taiwan is enjoying dry weather but again, uh, the stormy conditions could return in the next uh, two days here. The system will continue after making landfall, will continue moving northward and uh, trailing uh, the influence of uh, Bolivan and could actually make landfall here in eastern China by uh, the middle of next week. That is something we'll have to keep watching. And you can also see in this latest uh, model tracks, a very good agreement across computer models uh, forecasting is still a U-turn and uh, tracking just south of Taiwan here. Some models are taking this towards uh, North Korea and some models like here, the Navy's model, taking this into Eastern China. And you can also see here this uh, line here, the forecast for the other typhoon, Bolovin. Very good agreement from the computer models there um, as well, taking this system ni in Okinawa in the next uh, 24, 36 hours and perhaps make landfall here in the Korean Peninsula. Um, by Monday or two. And speaking of Bolivin, here we have the latest update here. Last look at approximately 420 kilometers southeast of Okinawa, or actually just about 180 kilometers south of the islands of Daito, uh, also from uh, also of Japan. You can see a uh, well defined pinhole line, less than uh, 15 nautical miles is developed, uh, a very strong signature, uh, very good outflow uh, as well. Uh, JMS increased the winds actually to 175 kilometers per hour with gusts of up to 250 kilometers per hour. The system is currently moving northwestward at 15 um, kilometers per hour and as I said could make landfall here in Okinawa by tomorrow uh, afternoon Sunday as a category 4 um, JTWC uh, forecasting a category 4 typhoon with winds of uh, with winds of as high as 240 kilometers per hour sustained so some very damaging winds possible in Okinawa and you can also see in this latest infrared image of how big the system is and how good the eye looks actually surrounded by strong convective activity and very excellent radial outflow poleward and equatorward outflow um, we are still seeing some dry air actually uh, but not as significant as before. We are seeing some warmer cloud tops relatively here in the eastern section of the system, but still a very strong uh, uh, infrared image um, either either way. Another aspect that we are watching is the eye wall replacement cycle that is currently happening inside the system. You can see the eye of the system is very small, and what happens here is the inner eye wall eventually collapses with a new eye wall uh, forming and uh, taking place. Um, we expect uh, the, yeah, we're thinking the eye wall replacement cycle actually happened or started last night and uh, is about to be completed. JTWC confirming our idea uh, in their latest prognostic analysis. Uh, not expected to weaken the system uh, although it could temporarily slow down the intensification and in fact JTWC only s expecting a 5 knot intensification for the next 24 hours despite the uh, good um, environment in uh, this region again possibly due to that um, IOL replacement cycle. Because of the approaching typhoon JMA has now issued storm warning for Dido Islands not for Okinawa just yet 
So we expect those warnings to be issued uh, later tonight. There are also issued high waves warning across Okinawa, Dairo, Amami, and even north into Kyushu as the waves generated by um, uh, Bolivin uh, could, uh, could become an issue in terms of stor storm surges and also for um, marine and, and uh, uh, sea travel. Kadena Air Base also upgraded their T Core or Tropical Cyclone condition of redness to 2. Means that destructive winds around 50 knots or greater are expected to occur within the next 24 hours. So um, by this time, residents should have uh, their uh, preparations made, um, all items inside, loose objects tied down or um, moved inside. And uh, with the wind field, the large wind field of the system, tropical storm force winds could begin here in Okinawa beginning um, later tonight and won't end until Monday morning. So perhaps 36 hours of tropical storm conditions just giving an idea how big the system in it uh, big the system is and also how slow the system is currently moving at th this latitude it's currently moving at 15 kilometers per hour so could uh, could take two days for for the stormy conditions to eventually die down here in Okinawa and speaking of rains uh, outer rain bands are now making their way across the Japanese islands Daito, Isl Daito Islands now reporting uh, rainfall amounts of around 30 millimeters since this morning you can see those outer rain bands now starting to make their way across Okinawa perhaps seeing some rains uh, in the next uh, three hours to begin and could only obviously could only get heavier as we go into the evening hours in terms of the winds Daido Islands also reporting tropical storm force winds of around um, 80 kilometers per hour and a station here actually reported seeing gusts of up to 120 kilometers per hour so despite being away from the eye, uh, around 180 kilometers away, uh, the, uh, the Daito Islands are starting to see some tropical storm force winds. So giving you also giving an idea how wide the wind field of the system is. And obviously as it makes in landfall in Okinawa tomorrow morning, expect uh, winds of up to 240 kilometers per hour sustained according to GTW, GTWC so very destructive winds very dangerous uh, winds um, for Okinawa could be the strongest typhoon to have hit Okinawa since typhoon Bart in 1999 I'm sure many of you I remember that system especially if you are in Okinawa now after making landfall the system will accelerate and continue to move nor northward um, passing uh, west of Jeju by Tuesday morning so by this time it will start to weaken uh, due to the cooler waters and increasing wind shear so it could become a category 3 or even a category 2 as it passes west of Jeju but still that island will uh, experience typhoon force and also eventually into the uh, western sections of the Korean Peninsula and also here in South Korea passing uh, west of Seoul um, by Tuesday afternoon uh, as perhaps a category 2 or category 1 Bolavin will make landfall here in North Korea uh, by Tuesday evening and uh, will be moving uh, faster than before passing near Pyongyang uh, by Tuesday evening and then eventually crossing into China by Wednesday morning and could begin extra tropical transition by that time as well now as I said before Bolavin will make landfall as perhaps a category 2 or category 1 which would become the strongest typhoon here in the Korean Peninsula since Typhoon Maimi in 2003 if you remember that system made landfall here in South Korea as a category 2 killed hundreds of people and destroyed billions of dollars worth of, um, of damages there so uh, unfortunately not only is Okinawa going to be hit but perhaps um, uh, South Korea South and North Korea and also uh, Seoul, which will only be around 200 kilometers away from landfall point at that time. But for now, all eyes remain on Okinawa as the system continues to move northwestward and again could make landfall here tomorrow morning. Continue to check out JMA, and if you are on inside the Kadena Air Base, please check out weather uh, website uh, specifically for the Kadena Air Base. They are giving real time T core reports and a uh, typhoon timeline on when you can expect strong winds to occur stay safe guys